I said, you know, the body's about 100 trillion cells. Uh, to view just half of your genome, you would have to view 10 nucleotides every second for 40 hours per week for 40 years. And the apparent simplicity of this language is very deceiving. Geneticists can't even begin to fathom how, how, this, how this works. Let me quote Richard Dawkins again. As an adult, you consist of a thousand million million cells. But when you were first conceived, you were just a single cell endowed with one master copy of the architect's plans. <laughs> See, here, they got a problem. They will not allow a divine foot in the door, but they can't really talk about what, what exists without plans, architect's plan, master plan, you know. Uh, they cannot describe what is there without acknowledging there is some intelligence behind this. Even um, uh, Stephen Hawking says, it's very difficult to talk about the origin of the universe without thinking of God. <laughs> well, of course it is. There's no other explanation. It won't work. Uh, well, he says, the coded message of the DNA is translated into another alphabet, the alphabet of amino acids, which spells out protein molecules. Proteins not only constitute much of the physical fabric of the body, they also exert sensitive control over all the chemical processes inside the cell, selectively turning them on and off at precise times and in precise places. Now listen to this. Exactly how this eventually leads to the development of a baby in the womb is a story which it will take decades, perhaps centuries, for embryologists to work out. <laughs> I mean, it just happened by chance, folks, but we can't even figure it out. Uh, well, I quote, in contrast to that, what did Solomon say in Ecclesiastes? As thou knowest not how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. This is the work of God, and he has hidden it from you. You will never get to it. So that just as space is so vast, we will never be able to explore it. You're not going to get out there, guys. You're kidding yourselves. You, you cannot do it. You're wasting your money. Why not admit it? No, it's pride. Pride that drives this. We can do it. We can create paradise. We're going to, what is it? We're going to run the show. That's, DNA is the instruction manual. What is cancer? I know some of you are praying for our daughter, our eldest daughter, Janice. She's, you know, she's still surviving. She's in a big battle with cancer. What is cancer? Well, it's a single cell that isn't obeying the DNA anymore. It kicked over the traces. It's doing its own thing. And that's what sin is. That's what man is. Man is like a cancer on this earth. He's not following the Ten Commandments. He's not following God's law written in his conscience. He's doing his own thing. And he's going to have to be excised. Going to have to be cut out. God cannot allow this to go on forever. Welcome back to Truth Seekers. Those phone numbers are up there again, so if you'd like to call us based on anything uh, Dave just said or anything relating to philosophically searching for truth, uh, here we are. We love to talk about it. Jay, any, any thoughts about that? Just to reiterate uh, those, those two comments Dave made about uh, two of the great evolutionists today, uh, Richard Dawkins and, and Stephen Hawking. Dawkins himself said, talked about, there has to be an architect behind this complexity of from going well, he from... He said it looks like it. Yeah, well, it doesn't again... doesn't have to be. But he said, 
it looks like it, okay? But that contradicts his whole belief of true evolution. And, and Stephen Hawking, you know, he's, he said, you know, without talking about uh, the origins, you, you have to mention God somehow. Why are these evolutionists speaking of a, an architect in a god if they're true blue evolutionists? I mean, just think about that. That's, that's pretty deep coming out of their mouth. Um, apparently, in the back of their mind, they, they must think, God, there must be some sort of intelligence because we're, we're mentioning it. That yep, a lot of, lot of seeming contradictions. Um, and, of course, there's no contradictions when you look at science from a biblical standpoint. Everything fits that I've seen, <laughs> as it should, because if we're dealing with truth, as we said be last week, and we said before, and we're all about truth-seeking, and that's what God wants. The Bible says He wants those who worship Him to worship in spirit and in truth. It's all about truth. Uh, and that's what I was searching for. I was looking for, not looking for God when I was searching to understand myself. I was just searching for truth about reality, about myself, about other people, about meaning of life, if there was one or not, not being one. Anyhow, um, it, it's, it's all about truth. Uh, I was going to share something with you. Um, in, in my search for truth, after searching through psychology, philosophy, Eastern religion, etc., the occult, silver mind control, existentialism, I finally read the Bible and became convinced. Um, and, and one thing we know, you know, it, people ask questions about Jesus, and it's, it's not really about the, the questions they ask. It's not really about the evidence. It's more about the fact that we don't, wa we don't want to be different, peer pressure. And so we don't want to really look in that direction because we, we know we're going to have to change our life in, in certain ways. And we don't want to give up habit patterns of the Bible called sin. But in terms of the evidence that, that, that is there, um, we've got all this science that matches with the science. I mean, what's the odds on the Bible not being wrong about science being written two, three thousand years ago? And science is coming up with all these discoveries. And, and this book predates all the discoveries, you know, the... They didn't know how many stars there were out there when this was written. You know, they could just see what their eyes could see, or maybe a little telescope that maybe somebody made that we don't know about. Um, they didn't know that. Uh, they didn't know so many things that are in here, but the science is verified over time. But in terms of prophecy, it, it says that someone is going to come in Isaiah 53 and die for the sins of mankind. Written, we got copies of it in the Dead Sea Scrolls. The whole book of Isaiah, including that chapter 53, someone's going to come, die for our sins, be rejected by Israel, yet he's going to live again, he's going to do miracles, and this there's a guy who shows up 700 or so years later named Jesus and says, I'm that guy. And, and we know that the Dead Sea Scrolls are accurate in terms of, of having this information because uh, it, it, the information we have today, I'm saying, is, is accurate, we know, because the Dead Sea Scrolls has the same translations. Uh, very little, the, you know, there have been a couple of spelling errors, but it doesn't change any real content to speak of in the Bible. So, Isaiah 53 read the same in the Dead Sea Scrolls as it reads today, and so when Jesus, and he may have held some of those copies of the Dead Sea Scrolls of Isaiah that are in existence today, for all we know, he held them in his own hands mm. and, and read from them in the synagogue. 